Well, welcome to today another session with uh, Paul Wenderley. Today we begin going to be talking about wines, how we're going to have a healthy way of um, we should be taking our wines and some pairings with tapas. Um, so Paul, maybe just give us a quick intro and, and we go from there. Talk. Okay, so I'm a health food chef, um, food as medicine educator and a, and a uh, clinical herbalist. So I've studied the uh, background in food as medicine. And my main, drive, my main drive is actually education. So today I want to talk about the basics of wine um, and also some fundamentals of healthy drinking. Okay. He healthy drinking aspects. To me, just start us like, you know, wines. I mean, there's so many different types of wines. You've got reds and the whites. Just make, is there a way you can give us a basic understanding? Yeah. Thanks, Noel. Well, wine is basically fermented grapes. Grapes hold the sugar. Um, like I said in another video, that you got either got starch or sugar as the, as the fundamentals of alcohol production. Then you introduce the yeast. Uh, that can be Saccharomyces cerevisiae, okay? And then that turns the sugar from the grape via the yeast into alcohol. It's a very simple ancient process, okay? One of the spin-offs of that process is, is carbon dioxide, which when trapped is turned into champagne. Or you've got these still wines where the, where the gas is released. Other components, as, as they're used to turning the sugar from the grapes into alcohol, other components are spun off like malic acid, citric acids, uh, there's certain acid, acidic compounds that are spin off besides CO2 in that production. So wine is, is basically a balance of fruit from the grape, the, the tannins, the, and the tannins from the seed and the skin, uh, the acids from fermentation. So it's, it's really, you can look at wine as uh, the fermentation process and the balance of acids and fruit, as well as in your wooded wines and your red wines, you've got the oak flavor as well. So that's really the basis of wine for, for the audience. We can go into that in depth in a, in a future video. Yep. Uh, in terms of like, I mean, healthy drinking, you know, obviously don't drink too much, but we were discussing before, you know, you got some, you know, there's some ways you could help yourself to, to, to make, maintain that. Mm. Well, wine was invented and should be consumed to have with food. It was invented to have with food by the early Belgian monks and some uh, French monks, etc. thousands of years ago. So wine is actually an ancient drink. Um, it should be consumed uh, with food and, and also matched with food. So we've, we've done some matchings today with uh, two wines in particular, but we can actually match many different wines with many different foods because the, the, one of the key components of matching flavours, especially with me, health food chef has to be with healthy food. Okay, I don't, I don't compromise there. Uh, you've got to either complement the flavor of the wine or oppose the flavor of the wine, but not cancel the flavors. So for instance, uh, a hummus can be very tangy. And if you have that with tangy wine, they can actually cancel each other out. So what you do is beat, beat the acidity, acidity of the wine. So then now the wine's fruit comes out. So that's really a very basic how do you match wine. You either complement the flavours or you oppose them so you get a zap and a cleansing of the palate. Um, if you actually match them too closely with the food, there's a cancelling out effect of the flavours. Um, so also matching low carb, low carb tappers, and I'll, I'll explain that in this video and in other videos, that if you actually match them with uh, alcohol, is treated like alcohol and the sugars in wine are treated like a sugar. Uh, treated like a sugar in the body, so you get a spike of insulin. So if you're using uh, low carb tappers like your nuts, avocados, um, maybe some pickled fish or some smoked fish, some cheeses, some capers, olives, you're really matching without the chips and the crackers and the etc. You're actually really increasing the health benefits and the digestive benefits of wine. Hi right, Paul, maybe you can just give us a, a, an idea of how we can sort of help ourselves to, to have a healthy way of drinking wine? Good question, uh, Noel. So the best, the best thing to do there is, uh, step one is the best quality wine you get your hands on. So nothing mass produced with lots of uh, preservatives, etc., etc., which is, we should attribute to the, the hang hangover and feeling uh, the nutritional uh, degradation. So the best quality, uh, hopefully locally produced wines, boutique wineries are really good. Um, Drink your water spritzer, your lemon water, sea salt, and spring water spritzer with, with your wine, before, with, and after. Um, I just mentioned that tip earlier, when you, instead of 
sipping your wine with your glass here. When you, when you have a sip, put your glass a little bit further away. That helps you actually, you're just talking now. Talking more is actually very important because you, when you're talking, you're not sipping. So then when you're talking, you have to like think about having a sip, but when you hold it here, your sip rate can be higher. So that's a, also a good tip. Uh, eat while you're drinking, because really wine was made for having with food, and food was made, uh, food is for having with wine. And also you can look at actually taking in the amino acids, glycine, glutamate, um, to increase your glutathione in your body, which helps you process alcohol from alcohol through to acetate, which is a, uh, the end product of alcohol metabolism. Okay. So that's, that's the best way to um, modulate and make drinking healthier, because the acids in wine actually stimulate digestion. They stimulate your flavors, your t salivation, and they actually are good for digestion, especially sharper white wines are very good for digestion. Okay. All right, maybe this is a good time we can do, maybe do some pairings of, of, yep. of your food and your, and your wine. And um... Yes, a pairing here, which is actually Windfall Estate uh, Chardonnay. And Chardonnay is undervalued with food as well. It's not, it's not really appreciated, like, just like a rosé. Rosé is a fantastic food wine, especially spring, summer, and Chardonnay is as well. So what we've got here, Noel, I've made a matching for you of a semi-wooded Chardonnay from the Ferguson Valley region or the Geograph region. So we'll have a tasting of this from the Windfall Wine Estate, okay? Now you find this is a sensation. This saved me when it comes to Chardonnay. Because the, the Chards around, some of them are too wooded, some of them are underfruited or overfruited. This one really saved my opinion of Chardonnay in its own right. So what I've matched it here with there is you have a sip of the Chardonnay and you get the aromas there. That is a sensational Chardonnay. It's beautiful. Mm. Now you have that with some buttery seafood. Because the Chardonnay, has got, it's like a buttery sharp wine that really cuts flavor. And you have that with your blue cheese as well. Have that with a bit of blue cheese and, and then smoked, smoked seafood, blue cheese, and it's so you're really getting those, the pungency of flavor and then the, the, the zap, the cleanse of the Chardonnay was just, what you're really doing here is compl having complementary flavors, but also opposing flavors. So you have the, the garlic buttery prawn there. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> and then a bit of smoked fish with feta cheese and capers. 